And I think the next speaker uh, hopefully is ready. Brian? I'm ready. Okay. Appreciate this opportunity to talk to you about a process that Murphy Brown, Missouri has, has taken on in uh, one of our farms. Uh, the presentation involved a, what is known as a large R&D project. Uh, we learned from the project. We modified the project where it can be somewhat successful. And at the same time, we'll show you how to capture uh, nutrients from a lagoon. The farm that we're talking about is the Valley View Farm. It's an average of about 85,000 head. Grow finish farm um, is permitted for around 114,000. It's 14 sets of eight barns. Uh, it's a large uh, finishing farm. It, these are hogs. The size, uh, we bring the pigs in at 55 pounds and they go out around 285 pounds. Uh, the project I'm going to show you, the first project, is about $9.6 million of capital cost. We built this project as part of an agreement with the state of Missouri and EPA to, found, to find new next generation technology. What, you know, that wasn't really defined. Uh, and we had an expert panel made up of John Sweeten. Larry Jacobson and Mike Williams, as well as a Missouri DNR representative, to help determine that through uh, an expert, what we call the expert management panel. This is the Valley View Farm. These are the sites. You can see the size of the farm. Um, it covers about three miles. It's pretty linear in length. Uh, we have an underground irrigation system there. Uh, push all the manure from that farm up to a little black dot up in the, the top left-hand corner here where we have a process known as the CPF plant. And it stands for Crystal Peak Farms Plant. The advantage of the Crystal Peak process as we trialed it on an 8,800 head finished farm was it was reducing odor, reduced air emissions, it minimized or eliminate the uh, irrigation, reduce lagoons, eliminate them, minimize the spill risk, and eliminate the sludge and phosphorus issue. This is an artist's rendering of it, of the system. In the foreground, you have an artist's rendering of the plant. Uh, in, in the middle of the picture, you have a system with a series of digesters. And on the Left here, you have the blue, you have a uh, what is known as a complete mix basin. The process started out in the very beginning with the inter internal recirculation process. It's a patented process developed by Murphy Brown. And what it does was allow for continued flush of the barns, and eliminate the use of the anaerobic open lagoon, and it produced a slurry of about 68% solid. An interesting process. Uh, and it worked real well. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of it. It's an enclosed building type of affair. Everything from the IRP system at that time uh, was pushed to a set of digesters. It's a batch design. There's five digesters, seven-day fill, 28-day digest period. We withdraw to the feed plant and has earthen basins. And uh, we move product from underneath the HDP liner to a complete mixed uh, basin. These are pictures of the digesters and the biogas. It, you can see the height of the, the uh, HDP as it's blown up. It's about 23 feet tall. This building is about 10 feet, so you can get a, a relationship as to the height of the how much gas we have underneath there. The purpose of the uh, digesters making the biogas was one is was to dry the solids that we make, which we'll show you here in a little bit, and also to break down the volatile solids in the system. This is another picture of them. You can see them to the right and to the left. Sorry, it's a back too quick. So there's we still use those quite extensively.
extensively. From here, the, the manure, after it's treated, is moved to a drying plant. It's provided by FECO International. FECO is a company located in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, they make drying drums primarily used in the fertilizer development business, as well as they made the drying drum system for Milorganite. A 7 by 42 foot uh, primary drum. We have a stainless charring drum. We have full air pollution control, bag house, cyclones, wet scrubbers, uh, dust recovery system, the whole nine yards. This is a picture from the top. You can see the 7 by 42 uh, rotating drying drum. This is where the principal prilling comes on, uh, is developed. This is where the, the products brought together and, and mixed. It, when we were running this system, it worked really well. Um, but it takes a product bounce from about a 30% solid down to around a 60% solid. The vast majority of the rest of the drying it turns and goes through a system uh, that's the final drying, and it uh, brings it to around an 89 percent total solid. This is a picture of the CPF plant that we have. Uh, like I said, we really don't use the vast majority of it yet, or still, because it was very expensive to run. Everything we run now is inside this building. Uh, and the other problem was we as mentioned earlier, it's expensive, and just like the previous presenter, the cost of the product and the cost of operating the system was prohibitive, and spreading that type of cost across, even though there's 85,000 uh, finished animals there, uh, we couldn't quite couldn't get the economics right. It was adding about seven dollars uh, per pig per day or per year. I'm sorry. We changed the design quite a bit about four years ago and tried to make it simpler because of the nature of the process because we learned so much from that earlier design and uh, so we said what what really works and and we came down to a system that's much simpler uh, is can be converted and used at other operations and uh, the components of the system, we have a barn scraping system, a receiving pit, we have a mobile waste transport, we have receiving stations at the digester, we have HCB, we're still using the, the digester, still covered in line, we have a biogas recovery system, which you saw, solid separation, solid storage, and fertilizer transport. The barn scraping system, this was a system that we had to, we had to find some way to reduce the odor from the barn. Everything else that we had, the expert panel wanted us to figure a way to reduce the odor from the barn. Uh, previous to this, we were using a flush style system, bringing lagoon water back from the anaerobic lagoons. Each site had 14 anaerobic lagoons and washing it out. Uh, we developed this process uh, after looking at some other systems. Scraper's been along, around a long time. So, we tried it and we found a process that reduced the odor and ammonia emissions and hydrogen sulfide emissions by around 76 percent. We've uh, installed these. We've had success on these. We put it on over 200 barns. Uh, very successful in how the operation uh, has, that operation has added us in manure removal as well as changed the whole dynamic from using a flush system to a solid scrape removal system. Here's a picture of a barn scraper system installed during the installation phase. A lot of the scrapers we had are 8 to 10 inches. We had to cut ours down because we were retrofitting an existing flush lane where it's only 8 inches. So we have about a 5 inch uh, scraper blade right here. And then the assembly adds about another 2 inches. So you have about an inch to an inch and a half of clearance as this moves back to the uh, drainage area. We have receiving pits uh, at this Valley View farm where we've scraped the manure into the pit. 
and we pick it up, they're totally enclosed. We have no waste exposed to the outside environment. Uh, we remove the material daily, though we do have capacity for twice a daily flow in case we have uh, some sort of equipment breakdown. Uh, in case we have an issue where our water line breaks, uh, we can move the uh, water into an existing lagoon as a backup, though we don't like to do that because that's a loss of product. The principal reason for keeping this product is we sell the product. At the same time, it reduces our amount of sludge buildup in any of our anaerobic lagoons, and uh, so there's a cost reduction feature there. On top of this, it eliminates barn spills. This is a picture of one of the barns in the very beginning. We have two pits per site per barn. Uh, on this one, you have eight total because there's four barns lined up on, this, on the west side. We've been able to reduce the number of pits uh, to about three per eight. Works very well. On a twice a daily basis, we have the transport system that comes and hooks on to the uh, line there, pulls the, the liquid out of the, the pits, and we either move it to the digester or we've also done uh, direct silage removal, which has been very successful as well. Um, this system uh, is pretty simple. We had been pumping the manure through lines. We found that with the 6 and 8% solve, we were continually line plugging, would not recommend going in that direction. We pump a, a lot of the, the manure goes either in a complete, complete mixed basin. You can see in this basin here, you've got a mixer that floats around that keeps that all the sludge in this basin elevated and off the end of this dock. There's a pump that pumps it up to a centrifuge. This is our centrifuge. It's about a 300 gallon per minute uh, Humboldt system. All the water is uh, taken away. We dewater it. We find for the best mix, we bring this product to about a 32% solids for the best mix of nutrients uh, in the P ratios and also there's no free water in this hog manure. Here's where you can see where we're loading out the conveyor system right into our truck where we either take it to a field where someone's bought it or we store it for sale at a later date. Here's a picture of the product that's loaded in the truck. Works really well. And this is where it's stored as a fertilizer product. And you see how it cakes and loads extremely well into the system. One thing uh, you'll notice that there's a deep line along here. Uh, uh, we find that storing it at this solid uh, uh, concentration with this, with this manure and digested solids that we really don't have a product with seepage. We, we have, stored, have stored as many as 300 tons in this building at any one time without any, any weepage on this, on, this type, on this type of product. From here, that product, from here, that product sold moved out, and moved off to the off of farm. Uh, uh, digested digest solid separation is 4 to 6%. Solids coming in, come out with a 32% total solid iron phosphorus, iron phosphorus and float in and float in the truck storage for storage or the sale. In the sale. Summary, this summary this system was the system was designed to reduce odors from both barns and lagoons. Designed to capture designed to capture hundred percent of the manure hundred percent of the time. Does that well exceedingly well. We so much so that we put it on another uh, uh, Seven finished farms and two south farms. Reserves, reserves the nutrients, creating more, creating more mobile product for area cropland. One of the areas problems that we've had is when we're pumping out lagoon water and we land apply that, you can really only go about two miles, two miles because of the low nutrient value of that before it turns uh, upside down on you as far as a, on a financial basis. We can serve, 
We conserve energy and reduce greenhouse gases. Great energy. Got great energy generation potential, so much so that it's being adopted by others and, and improves stormwater control. Another process, another process that we're doing at the Valley View Farm uh, that started out as a research project but now is being moved into a commercial phase is a nutrient recovery from lagoons using uh, electric remote control dredge and a series of separation systems. Um, here again, the process is we've used, uh, we've used uh, other processes that are that are heavily manned because this because this is a financially driven project where we are trying to reduce our costs. We've looked at this and this system. This is a remote control dredge. We have a joystick on the, on the bank, and the gentleman operates that and uh, moves the, uh, the dredge solids to series of solid separators on site. This is a separation unit on the farm. On the farm, pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. This is actually just a dumpster, two dumpsters, uh, six, six Suico screens with a trash screen on top. You can see it's, it's double deck. Brings the solids off of this process into a screw press. This is the vibratory. This is the vibratory screen. This is the picture of the Suico. The digest. See the, the digester, the lagoon in the background, and you can see the dredge. This is pretty real time. How it's pushing it right to the system. Here's a picture. Here's a picture of the screw press. We use this. We use this, and we typically get about another uh, four percent. Uh, reduction, solid, uh, reduction here. At the same time, we get a, a real nice liquor that comes off of this that's very high in nutrients, normally on the nitrogen side, and we have, we use that, and uh, we have found that we can sell that at a real uh, competitive commercial rate. And plus, and plus uh, we've got an exclusive with a, a fertilizer company, a local Co-op that buys this product, and uh, whenever we're, whenever we're running the system in the spring, summer, and fall. Picture the solids that we haul off on the system. They go directly to land application. All the products are sold on a commercial, on a commercial uh, basis uh, with a deduction because of the amount of water that you have in the process. One of the big one of the big issues to increase the value of this has been the infield storage. You now you saw the storage inside the uh, whole barn there. You can only you can only build so much storage, and then you're all you're doing is holding it to wait for the application season. And so then you turn into a situation where you've got expensive storage, and you've got to move the product around, and your storage pretty soon you your storage uh, consumed. And uh, you're sitting there waiting for uh, either the harvest or the pre-plant time. With putting it in the infield storage system, this is nothing more than an ag bag. Uh, we can store the product. We've had the product stored in this bag for over a year and a half. Very little degradation. Uh, put it on the farm, all to the farm, January, February, any time of the year. Get it ready for application in the spring. And then during the summertime, also haul it uh, during that period of time, waiting for the crops to come off. This is a picture of a side spreader, picture of a side spreader that we use. It does a good job on the application process. We apply everything to uh, through a CNMP. Um, it does exceedingly well. It's, uh, I can't make enough product fast enough, uh, especially during after harvest and uh, pre-plant. To get this in place uh, for the uh, exclusive uh, buyer of the product. This is our pledge analysis. This is our pledge analysis from the, the process. I uh, see the pounds that we get per thousand gallons. Pre complete fertilizer. It's well received. Uh, low odor. And uh, it's a marvelous job. 
uh, increase the nutrient value of our in our uh, system in our ground here, which is very uh, heavily clay uh, type soils, very low in uh, carbon values, and also increases the carbon value. So that's pretty. Much, so that's pretty much everything I have.